Hello class, welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 3-2, which is all about determining unit rates with ratios of fractions. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to use unit rates with ratios of fractions and use them to solve problems. So, <coughs> example one, find a unit rate involving unit fractions. Sergio is training for a triathlon. His target speed is 25 miles per hour. If it took his, if it took him 15 minutes to bike seven miles, did he achieve his target speed for the first seven miles of his ride? Okay, so how do we figure this out? We know that he's looking to bike 25 miles per one hour. So if you remember yesterday, I said that when you do that slash or that division sign, another way of saying it is per. Okay, so 25 miles per hour, that means 25 miles divided by one hour. That is the goal. So now we are going to take the other information we have. If it took him 15 minutes to bike seven miles, did he achieve his target speed? So let's make a little table here. We have our distance and we have our time. <clears throat> so what he was able to achieve was seven miles in 15 minutes. Now here is where these types of problems can get a little tricky or you might come say to me that you feel like it's trying to trick you. Um, it's not trying to trick you, it's just trying to make sure that you can pay attention to those details and do some conversions. So notice that the target speed is talking about time in hours, whereas here we were given information in minutes. So what I need to do is I need to figure out um, how much of an hour is 15 minutes. So 15 minutes is one fourth of an hour, right? So 15 minutes is one fourth of an hour because we'd have 15 and then 30 minutes would be half an hour, 45 minutes would be three fourths of an hour, and then if we were to hit 60 then you're up to one hour, right? So um, that 15 minutes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase that and I am going to rewrite it in terms of hours because that's what I'm ultimately looking for. I don't really care about the minutes right now. I care about the hours. So I'm gonna replace the 15 minutes with one fourth of an hour. Okay, now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I care most about it being like how far he goes in a total of one hour. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write one hour next to it because that's ultimately what I'm looking for and I'm gonna think to myself hmm one-fourth times what would get me to one one-fourth times four right so I need to multiply one-fourth by four in order to get up to that one hour and if I multiply the bottom I have to multiply the top because remember this table is representing a fraction so I'm gonna do seven times four, which is 28. Okay, so this tells me if he's going seven miles in 15 minutes or a quarter of an hour, that means that he would end up going 28 miles in one hour. So now that I have it in terms of one hour, I'm gonna do a little comparison. Did he reach his target speed? Yes, he's actually going faster than his target speed, right? Um, so we could say, yes, he is going even faster than his target speed. That's how we're going to do that first problem. Now, the second one is for you to try on your own, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint. Okay, so now we're talking about how Sergio increases his target speed. So that's his goal, right? His target speed, his goal is to reach 30 miles per hour. So he wants to know how many more miles does he need to ride in a quarter of an hour in order to achieve his speed, in order to achieve his target speed, his goal. Okay, so I included a little table here to try to make it a little bit easier to figure out. 
so you can see miles we're looking for how far he has to go in a quarter mile right but we know he ultimately wants 30 miles in one hour so you can see to go from 1 to 1 fourth I would have to divide by 4 so I want you to take a minute try to fill these um, blanks in including the ones down in the paragraph below and see if you're able to get the same answers as me good luck All right, for this problem, hopefully you said, okay, in order to get the target speed of 30, I and I wanna know how many miles he has to bike in a quarter of an hour, I would divide by four, right? So 30 divided by four is 7.5. And that means that Sergio must ride 7.5 miles in a quarter of an hour to achieve his target speed, which means he needs to ride an additional half mile per quarter hour. Okay, so if you have questions about that, please be sure to reach out for some help. I'm happy to help you. Uh, but otherwise, let's move on. We're going to keep up with the same idea, okay? So now we have <clears throat> Bronwyn mows the lawn every other weekend. She can mow 12,000 square feet in two-thirds of an hour. The lawn is 36,000 square feet. How long does it take her to mow the entire lawn? Okay, so let's make a little table. So we have the area, and our label for the area is square feet. And then we have time, and we're talking in hours. Okay, the information the problem gave us is that she can mow 12,000 square feet in two thirds of an hour. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna find out, well, okay, that's just part of an hour, right? So how much can she actually mow in one hour? So we need to figure out, what do we have to multiply two thirds by in order to get to one? Well, if you think back to our fraction unit, I taught you something about um, when you're dividing by fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal and that multiplying by the reciprocal is exactly what you have to do in order to get something to equal one. So remember the reciprocal is when you take the fraction and you flip it. Okay, and the reason this gives us one, if I were to erase this right here, um, if on the top of that fraction two times three would give me six, on the bottom six times, or <laughs> three times two would also give me six, and six divided by six just equals one, right? So when you have a fraction for the time and you're trying to get up to the <coughs> one, if you're trying to get up to like one hour or one of something, you multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so that means in order to get to one, I have to multiply by three over two. And if I multiply the bottom of this table by three over two, I also have to multiply the top of this table by 3 over 2. So the way that you can type that into your calculator is you can type in 12,000, hit your multiplication symbol, and then some of you have calculators that let you type in a fraction, some of you don't. So if you don't have a calculator that makes fractions easy, use a parenthesis, hit the number 3, hit your division key, hit a 2, close that parentheses and then hit equals. Once you do that, it should give you your answer. So that would be 18,000. So now we know that Bronwyn is able to mow 18,000 square feet in one hour. So we found the unit rate. Now let's go back to the question. The lawn is 36,000 feet. So how long does it take to mow the entire lawn? So now I'm going to put that 36,000 up here and say, what do I have to multiply 18 by in order to get to 36,000? Well, that would be two. So if I multiply the top by two, I have to multiply the bottom by two. So now I know that in order to mow that full lawn, that 36,000 square feet, Bronwyn needs two hours in order to complete mowing the lawn. Okay, 
So you can see I found the unit rate, 18,000 over one hour. Um, unit rate is always something over one, always, okay? Then I took that unit rate and I multiplied by, in this case, two, because that got me to the total I was looking for. And that informed me that it would take her two hours, okay? If you have questions about that, please be sure to reach out for some help. Otherwise, you can try this problem on your own, okay? We have every other weekend, Bronwyn's brother, Daniel, mows the lawn, okay? So they alternate every other week. He can mow 15,000 square feet in three quarters of an hour. The lawn is 36,000 square feet. Who mows the lawn in less time? Um, explain. So the explanation, honestly, again, it's going to be your work, okay? As long as I can follow your work, and I can see uh, what you get. That would be your explanation, okay? Good luck. All right, for this problem, hopefully you said that Daniel takes less time. Um, and the way that we know that is Daniel can mow 20,000 square feet in one hour, whereas Bronwyn can only mow 18,000 square feet in one hour. So we know that Daniel's speed is going to be faster, so he needs less time. All right, our last example, and then you'll have one problem like this to try on your own. So we have Omar knows that his friend Chris lives three-fifths uh, three of a mile away. And we, we want to figure out how far is the school from Omar's house. So if we look at this little map over here, we have Omar's house is three-quarters of an inch from Chris's house. And up here, it told us that that three quarters inch is the equivalent to three fifths of a mile, right? So what we're gonna do is you're going to take your like, um, let's see, what's the best way to say this? Like real distance divided by the map distance, okay? So the real distance um, we need to figure out like how far or how much does one inch represent. So we have to first use the information about Omar to Chris's house in order to figure out what one inch represents. Okay, so I'm going to take the real distance between Omar and Chris, which is three fifths, and I'm going to divide it, <coughs> excuse me, by the map, which is three quarters of an inch. Okay. Now, you guys have probably not really seen a fraction divided by a fraction written that way, so let me show it to you in a way that you're more familiar with. So whatever the top part of that, um, it's called a complex fraction when you have fractions within fractions. So the top part, that numerator of the complex fraction is three-fifths, and I'm going to say divided by, and then the bottom, the denominator of the complex fraction is three-fourths. And remember that dividing by fractions is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay, so when I multiply those two things, <coughs> I think you guys remember I tend to simplify, simplify on the diagonals before multiplying across. So I see I have a three that's repeating, so I know that I can divide both of those by three, and I'm left with one. So one times four is four, and then five times one is five. So I know that one inch, one inch equals four fifths of a mile, okay? Um, if you are someone that does not feel comfortable with simplifying before you multiply, what you can do is you can just multiply like normal. Three times four is 12, and then five times three is 15. And then look at those two numbers, say, okay, they're both divisible by three. So if I divide by three, divide by three, I get four. 12 divided by three is four. 15 divided by three is five. Okay, so you can see you get the same answer either way, but you should end up at one inch is four fifths of a mile. Okay, and then what we can do with that is we are able to now take the number of inches between Omar's house and school. So two, um, 
two inches on the map, right? And we can multiply it by how much one inch equals. So four fifths. Okay. So two times four fifths, that's the same as two over one times four fifths. So I get eight fifths or one and three fifths miles. Or if you are feeling like converting to decimals, you could also say one at, uh, one point six miles away. Okay, I would accept any of those. I think the online book, if I remember correctly, prefers that mixed number as your answer. Okay, so recap before you try one on your own. Take the real distance you're given and divide by the map distance that you know. Okay, so in this case, I knew the information, both the real and the map, between Omar and Chris. Doing that's going to tell you what your unit rate or what is. So one inch equals however many miles. <clears throat> then you take the distance that you are looking for. So in this case, Omar house to the school it said it was two inches so I'm gonna say two inches times and I know the unit rate is four fifths so I'd say times four fifths and that's how I got the one sixth or, uh, sorry 1.6 miles or the one and three fifths miles all right now this time they don't give you a picture so pay attention what information do you know um, what info what information do you know both the map distance and the real distance. Okay, so we have Sonoma bikes five miles to Paige's house. On a map, they measure that distance as five-sixths of a centimeter. That same map shows that the mall is three and a half centimeters from Paige's house. What is the actual distance from Paige's house and the mall? Okay, so go ahead and set this one up and solve it. Good luck. All right, for this problem, hopefully your work looks something similar to mine where you figured out one centimeter equals six miles. And then using that information, you did three and a half centimeters times six to find that the distance, the actual distance between Paige's house and the mall is 21 miles, okay? If you have questions about that, please be sure to reach out for some help. I am happy to help you. And then right here, you can find that key concept page. So it kind of summarizes everything that you need to know for the lesson. Um, again, if you have questions, reach out for some help. I'm happy to help you. Have a great day.